You came from what's colloquially called a working class family. Yes. What did they think of this? That they sent you aside and said, don't quit school. I mean, we like your music and we're glad you're interested in music, but we want you to be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer or a cowboy or something? <laughs> Somewhere between that. I mean, my dad had lots of suggestions. Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember saying, you know, th this, this music fad is going to pass, so you need to learn a trade. And I didn't go for that. Then he wanted me to join the Coast Guard, which if looking back at that time wasn't a bad idea because, you know, he wanted me to serve my country and I could have played in the Coast Guard band. So to a dad's mind, that was a good idea. No, Dad, I got to play this guitar, you know. I got I to gotta go to New York City and I got to be in a band, and do crazy things. And 17 years old, I was uh, playing in a band and I was making my own living. I was living in a basement, didn't have anything. I mean, you know, didn't have a toilet, but I, I was doing my thing. I was playing um, little corner bars. Uh, by then, I'd broken into the club scene of playing places like CBGB's, you know, Max's, Kansas City. So I was got, starting to get a little ground going, and all of a sudden there's this tall skinny guy looking at me with his hair combed back in the cowboy shirt, and it's Slim Jim. You need a drummer? You know I do. I got my drums in the car. And it all, those guys kind of just came into my life at the right time. And you developed what band? It started a band called the Tomcats. And the reason I called it the Tomcats was because to get work, a, a club wouldn't have you within two weeks of another date. So we just kept the cat name, Tomcats, Stray Cats, Wildcats. This way we could play and all the fans would know, but we were, we were fooling the club owners. <laughs> so we could get more work. <laughs> well, the Stray Cats became the best known. Stray Cats. Well, tell me about the Stray Cats. The Stray Cats, uh, actually the bass player thought up, Lee Rocker thought up the name Stray Cats. We all grew up on the same block. A little different backgrounds, but all the same, same kind of deal. Three Long Island guys. For some reason, we all love this music. Me and Slim Jim were the guys going to thrift stores and getting clothes and trying not to get into fights because of the way we looked. I mean, you know, really looking like that back in the day. Even though Long Island is part of, you think, New York, Long Island is like living in, like living in Kansas back then. It's, it's you know, it's just, it, it's America. So we're looking crazy, we're listening to punk rock music, and uh, Jim, I got to stand up on the drums, because I saw it on the back of an old Buddy Holly record. I thought the drummer stood up. It was just for a picture, you know, but I got Jim to stand up, and then Lee, he's the only one that could actually play the stand-up bass. No, stand-up bass was only used in orchestras. And all of a sudden we had this unique thing going, and it really had a chemistry going. So we started late 70s, you mentioned that uh, you got a lot of attention with the way you look. Yeah. That you were dressing retro at one view and to other people too far ahead. But tattoos, when did you get your first tattoo? I got my first tattoo when I was about 17. And uh, I just, uh, you know, again, it goes back to the, a lot to my dad. I like my dad. My dad's had a tattoo. I always liked it, you know. And I thought, well, maybe if I get a tattoo, I won't get in. I won't get in trouble, I won't get beat up, I won't get in fights. A lot, I, a lot of it goes back to, in those days, not getting into fights, isn't that funny? Because, you know, we'd be out in bars and stuff, people would be drinking, and we didn't want to get in fights, because we couldn't fight. So, after I got my first tattoo, which I drew up, and it was the Stray Cat head, became the Stray Cat logo, all of a sudden those things became like potato chips. You know, you want, you want another tattoo. But I don't see any showing. I don't have anything showing today, no because I never wanted to get anything on my hands or in my neck. I, uh, because uh, if, you, you know, if you have something showing like that, and I always thought this, you know, and if you ever had to go, it got in trouble, and uh, someone saw that on your neck, like a cop or a judge or something, you'd be branded a criminal. I never wanted to get anything like that. I always wanted to keep it private, you know what I mean? Well, you know, he's one who covered the police beat and courts for a long time. Yeah. As an apprentice reporter, that was pretty insightful. Did your father say that? You said he had tattoos, but yeah. up on his arms, not on his hands. Or I don't that. want to bring up my dad again, but he said, never get a tattoo where, where a judge can see it. Because if you ever go before a judge, he sees it on your neck, you're going right in. You know? And I always kind of kept that in the back of my mind.